Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. Welcome back to another episode of your second favorite internet show of this channel, the recreation series, where I try to replicate various effects or mechanics from various games, shows, and animes. Today we will recreate one of the iconic jutsu of Naruto from Naruto Shippuden. No no no, it's not Shadow Clones. I'm talking about Rasen Shuriken. At the end of the video, you would get something like this. We will make this using just visual shaders, no textures, no geometry. Well, actually we will use two quads, but that's it. For this, I will be using Godot 4.2 and an add-on called Shaderlib. And in the scene, I have set up a world environment node as well. The main module we need here is this glow. Alright, with everything out of the way, let's get shading. Okay, so Rasen Shuriken is basically just the combination of Rasengan and a Shuriken. I already have a video about Rasengan. And if you think, yeah, but it's in Unity, then I'm really disappointed. 1 plus 1 is always 2, regardless of the engines. Now, I will show you to create Rasengan here as well, but slightly differently. In my previous video, I used Sphere because I was naive. I could have simply used quad but I will rectify that in this video. Still, for step by step breakdown, I recommend you go check that video out. Alright, let's tackle Rasengan part here. First let's just create a quad. Then let me create a visual shader. And I will also create a material for our shader, so shader material and assign our shader, then apply the material to our quad. Also make sure to check our shader as unshaded because we don't want it to interact with the lights. And also set the blend mode to add so we can draw transparent objects on top of each other. In our shader, let's do core and edge part first. Ok, since we are using quad, there is no point in using Fresnel node. So we would simply use tiling and offset node. It is a combination of UV function node with both panning and scaling mode combined. Right now it simply returns the default UV which has the origin at top right. Let's shift it to the center using the offset minus 0.5 minus 0.5. Now take its output and feed it into the length node. It simply returns the length of a vector and we will get this cool effect. We will treat it as our edge and to fine tune it a bit, let's use a smooth step node. Smooth step node returns 0 if the x is less than this edge 0, returns 1 if the x is greater than edge 1, and for the values that lies between the edges, it will fade the values between 0 and 1 using hermit interpolation. Let's tweak the values a bit. You can of course use the float parameters if you want, but I will simply put the values here. Now we have the edge, let's create a core. To do that, we can just invert the result of length node using one minus node. Then we can use another smooth step node to fine tune the core. But there is a better way to create a glowing core. Let's create a divide node. We will divide some small values with our length. And we have this nice glowing core. Now to control the size, you can use a float parameter here as well. Now Godot does handle the division by zero error. 
but some other engines may not and our length will have zero at the center so to prevent that let's simply use max node it returns maximum values between the inputs simply feed some smaller number instead of zero to prevent getting the value zero in the output then feed it into the divide node now we have edge as well as core let's add them together all right now we have this effect but still it is a square we want circle to get that let's use ellipse node it will create the ellipse shape based on this width and height set them both as one and we have this nice circle now to cut out the corners of our square we will simply multiply these two together now we have nice circle with edge and core take its output and feed it into the alpha now to control the color of our rasangan from the inspector let's create a color parameter let me call it main color and give some default bluish color then let's simply multiply it with our edge and core now we have color but we don't have a way to control the intensity of our asangan so let's create a float parameter call it intensity give default value of 5 and let's multiply it with our edge and core and take its output and feed it into the albedo now it is time to deal with swirling lines part this is pretty much the same process as previous video let's grab the Voronoi node it will give us the Voronoi noise we will control the cell density from the inspector so let's create a float parameter call it cell density give default value of 5 and feed it into the cell density take our Voronoi node's output and feed it into the power node power node will darken the values which are less than 1 as we increase the power to control the power from the inspector let's create another float parameter call it blend give default value of 5 and feed it into the power node now we have these lines to make it look like swirling let's use a 12 node twirl node will distort the UVs like this based on the strength we want to control it from the inspector so you guessed it let's create another float parameter node call it twirl strength give default value of 5 and feed it into the strength now we have the swirling lines Let's rotate it using rotate node. Set the units to radians. Take its output and feed it into 12 nodes UVs. Now we can rotate our lines using the rotation. We want to rotate it over time. So let's access time variable. Let's also create a float parameter to control the rotation speed give default value of 5 and multiply it with our time then take its output and feed it into the rotation now we want the same rotating lines but in opposite direction so let's first copy these nodes Then to make it twirl in opposite direction, let's feed the negative strength 
So just use negate node. Negate node will multiply whatever values we feed in with minus one. Then let's do the same for rotation as well. Now let's add these two together. Alright, let's create another color parameter to control the color of our lines. Let's call it line color. Give some default color. And then multiply it with our lines. And let's add our lines with our edge and core. Then take its output and feed it into this multiply. And we have Rasengan, but it's just a 2D circle. So let's go to vertex processor, create get billboard matrix node, select billboard type enabled, check keep scale. So we can also scale our Rasengan. Then take its output and feed it into model view matrix. Now we have made our 2D Rasengan as billboard, so it will always face toward the camera. And that is all for the Rasengan part. Now let's deal with Shuriken part. For that, let's create another quad as child of our Rasengan. Rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Then let's create another visual shader. We will do the same things as before. Set blend mode to add. And check the unshaded flag. Also make sure to check the curl mode to disabled. We want to render both sides of our quad this time. Then let's create a material for our shader. Assign our shader to the material and apply our material to the quad. In our shader, let's try to create a basic shuriken shape. For that, let's once again create tiling and offset node. Set the offset to minus 0.5 minus 0.5. Now our x values have 0 at the center, right side we have positive values and left side we have negative values. Similarly, our y values have 0 at the center, top side we have negative values and bottom side we have positive values. We want positive values so let's use absolute nodes. Now if we multiply our uv's x and y, we will get this diamond-like shape. Cool, but there is a better way to do this. So let's just multiply our original x and y. And then feed it into the absolute node. Now we want white instead of black and vice versa. So let's simply use one minus node. One minus will subtract whatever values we feed in from one. So in our case, it will invert the colors. Now to fine tune the shape, we will use the power node. We've already discussed the power node and we will control the power from the inspector. So let's create a float parameter. Call it blend. Set default value to 100 and feed it into the power node. Now our diamond shape goes all the way to the edges. We don't want that. So let's try to fix it. Let's use our tiling and offset nodes UVs and feed it into the length node. Again, we want to flip the colors, so we will feed its output to one minus node. Now to fine tune the values, let's use 
smooth step node. Let's tweak the values a bit. You can also create float parameters to control this from the inspector. Then we will multiply these two together. Now we have a shuriken like shape. But this may have values greater than 1. So let's clamp it between 0 and 1 using saturate node. Then take its output and feed it into the alpha. Now let's create a color parameter to control the color from the inspector. Call it main color. Give some default bluish color. We will multiply it with our shuriken shape. Now to control the intensity of our color, let's create a float parameter. Call it intensity, give default value of 5 and multiply it with our color. And take its output and feed it into the albedo. Now in the anime, the shuriken shape is slightly sheared or bent. So let's use radial shear node. It will distort the UVs like this, fade its output to our tiling and offsets UVs. And we will control the strength from the inspector. So let's create another float parameter. Call it shear strength. Give default value of 5 and feed it into the strength. Now we have this nice shape. Only thing remaining is to rotate it and to rotate it we will use rotate node. Set units to radians. We will rotate it over time. So just like we did earlier, let's grab time variable. To control the speed, let's create a float parameter. Call it speed. Give default value of 100, multiply it with our time, then take its output and feed it into the rotation. Take our rotate node's output and feed it into radial shears UV. And that's all for our shaders. In the scene view, let's adjust our materials. And we have our nice Rasan Shurgan. Now if you intend to use it in 2D, obviously then you would make shaders for canvas item. Then you could use two sprite 2Ds and you just scale the Shurgan effect on the Y axis like this. And that's pretty much the video. If you find the video helpful, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Wishlist Cosmic Roads on Steam. That's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one.